Uh, it was made up. There's no real reason to celebrate it. It's payback for all the stuff men do on Valentine's Day. It's the women's turn to do something. Well, isn't it a made up holiday? Didn't uh, Hallmark make it up? Do you agree with that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Never celebrated it. You celebrate it? No. So is Sweetest Day some kind of Hallmark holiday? Yes! No. Hallmark didn't invent its first Sweetest Day card until the 1960s, while the first Sweetest Day was held in 1921 in Cleveland, Ohio, where, coincidentally, American Greetings is headquartered. But they didn't invent it either. They were busy in 1921 printing picture postcards for Euclid Beach Amusement Park. In fact, it wasn't the greeting card industry at all behind the origin of Sweetest Day. It was the candy industry. Oh, thank you. On May 10th, 1916, the National Confectioners Association held its 33rd annual convention here at the Hotel Statler in Detroit, Michigan, where the group of candy makers voted to approve an historic resolution. We so move that the second Saturday of the month of October in each year be designated as Candy Day. A little effort and hard work by all hands in our industry will make Candy Day the happiest and sweetest day, sweetest day in the year. And that was the first time anybody ever used the term sweetest day. But Candy Day 1917 was not to be because someone insisted that it be canceled. And you've probably heard of him, Herbert Hoover. As October 1917 approached, Herbert Hoover, head of the U.S. Food Administration and future U.S. President, heard about Candy Day and went ballistic. After all, it was his job to make sure that U.S. soldiers fighting in World War I had enough to eat. And he did this by creating reserves of essential foods like wheat and sugar. Hoover reminded the candy makers, rather harshly, that the nation was at war, there was a sugar shortage, and any attempt to promote a national candy day ran contrary to the war effort to conserve sugar. Not wanting to seem unpatriotic, the candy industry promptly canceled Candy Day. America. After the end of World War I, when the sugar shortage was over, Candy Day was reimagined and reborn, this time officially as Sweetest Day. And it started on October 8, 1921, in Cleveland. According to mythology, Herbert Birch Kingston organized the first Sweetest Day, not necessarily to sell candy, but to bring happiness to orphans, shut-ins, and others who were forgotten. By all accounts, Kingston was involved in the first Sweetest Day, but not as a candy company employee. In 1921, he was the president of the Kingston Company, an advertising agency located on the third floor of this office building in downtown Cleveland. Kingston was an ad man. So what did Herbert Birch Kingston do for Sweetest Day? Well, for one thing, it's likely that he helped orchestrate the publication of this special advertising section, which ran in the October 2nd, 1921 edition of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. The newspaper acknowledges how these eight Cleveland confectioners came together to form the first Sweetest Day in the Year committee. Everywhere we went, we were greeted with cheers. At one nursing home, an elderly lady told us with tears in her eyes that no one ever thought of giving them candy. These men must be given great credit for the success of the Sweetest Day campaign. All of Cleveland knows what was accomplished. In October of 2000, Herbert Kingston's youngest daughter, the late Janet Kingston Knapp, wrote a letter to Hallmark thanking the company for finally acknowledging her father's role in the creation of Sweetest Day. But the question remains, given that Sweetest Day has its roots in a candy promotion, should we celebrate it? Well, consider this advice from a 16th century Italian poet. Any time not spent on love is wasted. <laughs>